Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering all the updates from Microsoft in April of 2022. If you watched my update videos in the past, you know I focus in on what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. Getting into it here, I'm going to start off with Microsoft Teams as I usually do. This first one here is related to the user requests for apps within the Teams App Store. Previously, if you were an admin in the Teams Admin Center and you blocked an application, they would not have access or visibility to see that within the, admin, or the uh, App Store. But here, this is giving you a little bit more granular ability to have the user request approval for certain applications. And you, as the administrator, can then sanction the application for that user. Seems a little bit counterintuitive at first, but you have to think of things like Shadow IT, granting access to privileged applications, as well as looking at maybe even controlling the licensing for certain applications that users may want within the environment. So this will happen in late April and be complete by early May, and that's on a tenant by tenant basis. Next ones here are related to licensing here. The first one's related to the Defender for Business standalone offer. If you've been keeping up to date with Defender for Business, you know that it's included with Business Premium. At this point in time, it's more of a lightweight version of the enterprise solution that's granted here, but it is giving you that endpoint protection. It is going to be available as of May 1st, and it will be at $3 per user per month. So you can look at bolting on to other plans like Microsoft Standard, for instance, as an endpoint protection solution. Next three here are all related to licensing as well too. This first one is related to new commerce. We talk about this each month now, but essentially here we have this announcement where you have a push out in the date for your legacy subscription automatically converting or needing to be converted into new commerce subscription. Previously that date was July 1, now it's July 11th. So really not that much of a delta here. But the key thing to note is that your back-end annual renewal on your existing legacy subscription today could be for a date in the future past this July 11th date. It's a little confusing, but essentially here, that back-end date is when that legacy subscription is going to renew. You could have ones in September, you could have ones all throughout December as well too. So it's important to note that you take uh, consideration into the fact that you may have legacy subscriptions lingering for a little bit of time and some of you may be privy to that today but just note that when they come up for renewal they'll have to renew into new commerce and a distributor you may be working with today might automatically convert them into a month-to-month -month NCE contract just to avoid any disruption in service for the customer so that's a big one coming from new commerce here the next one is for Azure subscriptions. Because we moved to new commerce for Azure as well too, that was much less of a pain point than 365 and Dynamics here. But essentially, they're giving you the ability to automate the transfer of an Azure subscription between partners or providers. So this would constitute both you moving from distri distributors, um, so moving from one to the other, as well as moving the customer business from either direct from Microsoft or with another MSP that you've recently acquired. This used to be a huge pain point. There was forms involved that you had to fill out, manual forms that each party had to sign. It was extremely time consuming and inefficient. So now all this can be done through the Azure portal and partner center. In our eyes, our reserved instances can now be automatically moved as well too, where that was a previous limitation. You had to manually spin those back up and reassociate them to the particular VMs. So that was a big announcement here as well too, just for ease of use when it comes to transferring Azure subscriptions. The last one here is related to Windows 365 Business and Enterprise and CSP. They recently announced this new annual term and the big part of that is that it's at a 10% discount over the monthly plan. So there's at least some cost savings with that one um, that you can consume if you want to use it for an annual term and that will be available effective immediately. So you guys can get uh, be searching for that in your catalog or working with the distributor to purchase an annual term uh, for those licenses. And if you want more information, I'll be linked on my blog as well too if you want to get more of the specifics on that. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in today's video for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys. Have a great day.